Hey guys, so we are starting a new series. Aren't you excited? We're going to be talking about the building of the tabernacle, which starts in Exodus chapter 25. So this is going to be kind of like a Bible study, kind of a devotional experience. I recently did, did this study with my family and I found it very, very insightful and I felt that it would encourage other people out there. So I wanted to share. All right. But before we get into that, welcome to Yem's World. I'm coming to you live from the house. If you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section and share the video. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts about what we're going to talk about. So make sure you uh, leave a comment because I'm really, really interested in that. All right, guys, let's get into it. I got to give you a little bit of context here. By the way, when you're this is going to be a study. So when you're studying, make sure you have your Bible and make sure you have your notes and a pen, of course. Um, and, you know, if you haven't already read this, I want you to pause the video. Pause the video. Read Exodus 25. Pause the video. Read Exodus 25. Before you read pray that the Lord will uh, open this scripture, open your eyes to what the Lord has to say in the scripture. All right, you're back. Thank you for reading it. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of context about what is happening at this point in time. How did we get to the point where we need to build the tabernacle? First of all, we are at a point where the Israelites have come out of Egypt just recently come out of Egypt and the Lord has uh, given them the Ten Commandments. He just gave them the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20. And so we're kind of in this process. They're wandering in the wilderness. They've just been liberated from the Egyptians. Um, and so they're just coming out and the Lord is like, okay, let's set some ground rules. And he gives them um, the uh, Ten Commandments. And now he's telling them that, you know, as they wander, he wants them to build them this tabernacle. And, you know, what is this tabernacle? It's it's basically like a tent that, that God wants them to create uh, for him to meet with them and for him to speak with them through the priests. And so his, uh, typically his uh, glory will come in the pillar of a cloud and he'll hover over this tent and when his glory is present, you know, everybody is at a standstill and they're basically meeting with God and hearing what God has to say. When the cloud lifts, then they can proceed in their journey. So now he's telling them to build this tabernacle. So that's where we are. Okay. All right. So Exodus 25, and I got my notes here with me and I got my Bible here with me. Powerful, powerful scripture. The first verse in Exodus 25 basically talks about God is telling Moses to tell the people to bring an offering. Now, he says, let anyone who is willing in their heart bring an offering. So he tells people to bring an offering. Now, he says, what kind of offering? And this is the offering you should bring. He tells them to bring different kinds of metals and different kind of animal products and uh, different kinds of uh, hold on a second here. Different kinds of um, incenses and animal products and oil and spices, jewels, all kinds of things. So he wants them to bring all of these things together first. So that's the first instruction that he gives them is to bring all these offerings to you know to Moses. Now. I think that's the first eight verses. Once all of those offerings are brought forth for those who are willing, keyword, uh, now he says, now build me a tabernacle. Now I found this interesting because I found it interesting the fact that he would make the provision for the tabernacle before he even gives the instruction to build the tabernacle okay so when god gives us assignments god always makes the provision available so if you're struggling with the provision 
then you need to check the vision. <laughs> um, you need to confirm whether this is something that God is telling you to do. Because when God gives an instruction to do something, he has already uh, made the provisions available. Now, did you hear what kind of resources he was telling them to bring? These were the best of the best. He was telling them to bring pure gold, silver, and bronze or brass. He was telling them to bring onyx stones. He was telling them to bring goat's hair. He was telling them to bring spices, anoint pure olive oil. He was telling them to bring the best of the best. Okay? He, was tell he told them to bring acacia wood or shittim wood, like it says in, in the King James Version. These were all of the very best. Okay, so first of all, build, the building of the tabernacle was a very resource heavy project. It was very resource heavy. And he told them to bring the very best of all of the materials. The very best. So when, uh, you know, I, I, I've had different discussions with people and I've heard different things about, you know, People spending all this money to build a church. No, God gave, God told them to build this tabernacle. And he wanted them to build the very best possible tabernacle ever. Okay? With the best materials. So when we are building our churches and things like that, when, you, when, when people come into your church, you gotta, you got to put your best foot forward. You got to have the best. Because this was a place that God was going to come and meet with them. God, king. He's a king, right? And so if the king is coming to meet with somebody, it's got to be in the very best place possible with the very best surroundings, with the very best resources, with the very best materials. And um, so that was one of the things that I, that kind of what maybe was a little bit of a shocker to me. So he it would he told people to bring, you know, people that were willing. Look, put put it all in. Put it all in. And so that's, that was um, a, a, a key discovery for me that, you know, when God gives us an assignment, he wants us to, to give the best. He wants us to have the best. But the thing is, those provisions were made available before the assignment was even given, right? So God will always make those things available. Okay? So now, God had counted the cost. He knew what it was going to take to do the assignment and which is why he told them bring the materials bring this offering he counted the cost what is it going to take to build this tabernacle he counted the bible says before you start an assignment count the cost so you know whether or not you'll be able to finish the assignment that means god didn't want to have any excuses for this tabernacle not being built no excuses and therefore, he made all of the resources available. Okay? So count the cost. We have different projects that we're doing in our lives. Let's make sure we are counting the cost. Let's make sure we have our resources available so that there's no excuse for incompletion. Okay? After settling all the resources, he gives them the instruction to build, right? He gives them the instruction. Then he gives them the pattern. God does not just say, okay, build me a tabernacle, and then he walks away. No. He did not leave anything up to chance. He did not leave anything up to one person's decision, one person's interpretation. He said, no. This is the pattern that I'm giving to you. And then he says, follow the pattern. Make sure you do all that I've told you to do according to the pattern that I've given to you and he repeats that severally even throughout this whole process so he gives the instruction first he gives the materials then he gives the instruction then he gives the pattern okay now in modern day this pattern would be the specs he gives the blueprint or the um, the specifications now I happen to work uh, in manufacturing or I've worked yes I've worked in manufacturing before and I know how important specifications are 
specifications are basically the exact instructions for how to do what needs to be done. I used to work in packaging in, in uh, you know, in years past. And so I would give my our specification to our vendor and there's always a tolerance. So you can make this box uh, 20 by 30 by 20. And maybe there's a little ver and maybe there's a little tolerance in there. But if you go outside the tolerance, reject it. Reject it immediately. There was no questions asked. It was rejected and it was returned back to the vendor. I was at the forefront of this. I was directly interacting with our vendors. And if they ever delivered anything that fell outside of the specification, there was no questions asked. There wasn't like, oh, can we just manage? No, it was rejected and returned to them at their cost <laughs> immediately. There was no questions about it. So God gives this pattern. He gives this specification. He gives this blueprint of how the uh, tabernacle is supposed to be built. And he says, follow the pattern. Okay. Do not deviate. Do not put your creative style on this. Do not think outside of, no, follow the pattern. And that's a note for somebody, probably I'm that somebody, is when he gives the instruction, just follow the instruction. Exactly the way that he gives it. So he gives this instruction, he tells them to make the pattern. He, he says, make this tabernacle, follow the pattern that I'll give you. He proceeds to now tell them, what is the pattern? And it is so interesting to me. He's literally giving them dimensions. He's telling them to make this two cubits high and one cubit long. And he's telling them to put overlay it with pure gold. So first he tells them to make this Ark of the Covenant. And so he says, make it with the acacia wood and overlay it with pure gold, right? And he says, make it X by X by X. This, like, you would think, why would God be so interested in the actual measurements and the dimensions of this Ark of the Covenant? Like, does it matter? Like, what? What? Why? Why? But he was so specific. He was so specific. And what this revealed to me is that God is interested in the details. God is a detail God. He is a detailed God. God, he's detailed oriented. He's interested in the details, the little, little details of our lives. He's interested in it. He wants to give us a pattern for how to live our lives in how we pick out what we're going to wear for the day. Like it's down to the details. And I didn't realize that God cared about the details. But when I studied this, I said, okay, God is really, really, really into the details. Okay. So he gave them these specific patterns. He would tell them, you know, make this of this kind of material. He said, put, you know, onyx stones here. He, he, he just was very specific. And so if God is that specific, then we also need to be very intentional, very specific about the things that we do, about the things that we get involved in, about the, even about the little things the things that we eat, you know, the very down to the minute details. God is interested in that. And so should you and I. Um, okay. He says, after making the Ark of the Covenant, he says, make the mercy seat, which is basically going to go on top of the covenant, on the Ark of the Covenant. And this mercy seat is going to have these two cherubims that are facing themselves. He, this is the instruction that he says. Two cherubims with their wings open that are facing each other that are over the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. And he says, uh, later on, he says, there I will meet with you. But basically he's saying, you know, um, and then he calls it the mercy seat. That's a whole different discussion. We're not even going to get into that today. But so specific 
about what to do. Have these cherubims facing themselves, wings open, hanging over the mercy seat. This mercy seat is going on top of the covenant. So very specific, how you organize your home. God can give you a pattern for how to organize your home, for how to organize your office, for how to organize your life, okay? Detail-oriented God. And this is the discovery that I was making about him, that he's into the details, the God of the details. Um, then he tells them to make these dishes that will are made of pure gold, um, that are going to be made on an altar of pure gold and a lampstand of pure gold. And he tells them for the lampstand, there's going to be a lampstand and then three branches coming out on the right side and three branches coming out on the left side. And then there's going to, I mean, it's just so specific. And so, you know, in this passage, you know, uh, as I close, it was what I learned was God is, first of all, he makes provisions available right he makes a provision available before he gives the instruction then he gives the instruction so he has counted the cost he has made the provisions available he is now the provisions were given by people so he didn't rain the provisions down from heaven they didn't it didn't rain gold it didn't rain uh shittim wood right those provisions were brought by people so uh, when he makes these resources available, they don't just pop up out of nowhere. There are people who are, you know, making these resources available. So he makes these resources available. He counts the cost. He figures out, okay, it's going to take this, this, and this to do this assignment. And he makes that available. Then he gives the instruction. Build this tabernacle. Build me a tabernacle. He gives the instruction. Then after he gives the instruction, he gives the pattern. How should you build a tabernacle? Well, these are the dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. These are the materials that you're going to use. You're going to overlay it with pure gold. And then um, after he does that, he, you know, he has everything set up. And it's, it, it was just such an encouragement to me to read this and to know that, first of all, God is, he is high class. Okay, this is the God who created the heavens and the earth. So if you're going to create a place for him, it's got to be the best. It's got to be the best, very resource heavy, the very best. And then secondly, he's the God of the details. So if they would have made that Ark of the Covenant three by five cubits, nah, that's wrong. And that will be rejected. Two, I believe two by one or two and a half by one and a half. I, I can't remember, but go and read it and you'll figure it out yourself. But very specific, detail oriented. And I believe... You know, that God wants us to uh, be intentional and be very specific about how we follow the instructions that he gives us and that he's watching the details. He's watching the materials that we're using to do our, to do our thing. He's watching, you know, uh, our hearts to see if when we make these provisions available, are we, are we doing it out of necessity? Are we doing it grudgingly? Or are we doing it cheerfully and willingly? He's watching those things. He's watching if you're following the pattern. And so, uh, you know, Continue to, 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 to mull over that and to think about that to, and, and, and take a look in, in your life. And, I, and I'm doing that in mine on, you know, how can I be more, more uh, obedient? And he said, follow this pattern. He expects us to be obedient, but he's watching all of those things. So I hope you were blessed and I hope you were encouraged. Make sure you leave a comment again in the comment section. Share your thoughts. I want to know what you got, what you saw in Exodus 25, what stuck out to you, and uh, what encouraged you, what blessed you, what lessons can you take from this passage. And we will continue. We're going to continue throughout the process. So this is just the beginning. Um, the next time we'll come back for Exodus 26. All right, guys, that's it. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section, and share the video. Until next time, see ya.